Hallelujah. Important things are important. Would you agree with that? We always manage to do the things that are important to our lives and the things that we put off or delay aren't important. Otherwise they would have been at the top of the list. So Israel is important to me. Here's a photograph of some of the important people in my life. Just some of them. That was taken about 1,700 miles away last week in, in Gran Canaria. Okay, we weren't there. Uh, we just cried. Because <laughs> we wanted to be there. And there's a picture of the second most important person in my life. Okay? That's my wife. I don't have a photograph of the most important person in my life because his name is Jesus. You know, it took Pastor John and I a little while after we first got saved to realise actually that Jesus is more important to us than we are to each other. You know? I don't want Pastor Janet to leave this earth and go to heaven yet, but if she was to die tomorrow, I could cope because I've got Jesus. If suddenly Jesus didn't exist, I'd, I'd quit. Because I, I don't want life without him, because he's amazing. So what's that got to do with anything? Well, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He grew up in Nazareth. He ministered a lot of times in Jerusalem. And there's another one. He walked on the Sea of Galilee. So what do they have in common, those things? Where are all these places? They're in Israel. So the thing is, that the most important person in my life, I want to know about his country. I want to know about his place. I'm, I'm, I'm sad to say, I don't know that much yet. I should have done, and I need to know more about Bethlehem, where he was born and Nazareth where he grew up. I know quite a bit about Jerusalem now, but that was when he was ministering. And I think it's important that we need to know about it. Israel, a much hated place. My like Pastor Zion said just now, there is no place on earth more hated than Israel. There is no capital city on earth that has more foreign journalists than Jerusalem. Why? Because they know there's always something going on there. The trouble is, they don't report it. They don't report it. If you want to know what's really going on in Israel, watch the BBC for a minute and switch it off and then find somebody who really knows what's going on there because the BBC are so biased it's not true. You won't hear anything that's going on there, unless it's a negative. You hear about um, a, a person who, who's going around with, a, with a, a knife and stabbing people, and he stabs maybe three Israeli people, a Palestinian stabs three Israeli people, and before he can kill any, hurt any more people, a soldier shoots him dead. What's the headline? Palestinian shot dead in Jerusalem. <laughs> wasn't the thing it was what he was doing first that caused all that and we don't hear the stuff that's really going on there's always been a problem since Jesus' time more before that as well but since Jesus' time from, until AD 313 the Romans ruled and then it was called the Byzantine rule they were kind of Christians because Emperor Constantine became a Christian and then told everybody you can either become a Christian or have your head chopped off. Yeah? And then he, he made the, his headquarters in Constantinople. Then later on in 636 for 400 years the Muslims took over. Now when they took over they weren't keen on the, on the Jews at all, never had been. And then we had the Crusaders for a couple of hundred years Christians, I put there with a question mark. Christians, because when they got there, their idea was to go to the Holy Land and rid the Holy Land of the infidel. That was their statement. So they killed as many 
Arab people as they wanted and Jewish people. I don't know why, but they thought only Christians should be in Israel. Typical. Then they got beaten by some Egyptian people who took over for quite a long time. And while the, the Mamluks from Egypt were looking after Israel, everything went into absolutely dire poverty. The whole infrastructure fell apart, there was no administration, so to speak, at all, and everybody was in a state. And then the Turks took over. They invaded the place and took over for 400 years, and things started getting a little bit better, and the Turks would allow both the Arabs and the Jews to do their ministering and worshipping, as long as it didn't affect them. And then in 1917, the British went over there and got rid of the Turks. So that was the end of the people there. Unfortunately, what happened then was, other things went wrong and people started causing problems again. But just as a prelude to the independence, in 1897, a guy called Theodore Herzl, he was the, at the first Zionist conference. The Zionist Congress, the Zionist conferences, were gathering Christians and, and Jewish people together to talk about that Jewish people should have their own state called Israel. Because it wasn't there anymore. And then in 1917, the right of Israel to its own state was recognised in this country by the Balfour Declaration. James Balfour is our Foreign Secretary, Secretary and he sent a letter to James Balfour, from him to Loth Rothschild, who was the senior Jewish man in Britain at the time. And he said, we're behind you, we're supporting you, and we believe you should have your own state. That's called the Balfour Declaration. I don't know if you've heard about it before, but recently our own uh, Prime Minister, Theresa May, said that we are going to celebrate that this year, because in November it's the 100th anniversary of the Balfour Declaration. And Theresa May said we're going to celebrate it in this country. A lot of people won't want that, but it's going to happen anyway. And we are glad that we as a country stand with Israel. Amen? We like that. Then it's the independence itself. Between 1918 and 1948, the British were given the rule and the mandate over, it was called Palestine then. <coughs> I wish it had never been called that, but it was called Palestine then. And what that meant was the British, because they just defeated the Turks, the British took over and they administrated the place. They weren't running all the religious things that were going on, but they were looking after the place and administrating it. On the 29th of November 1947, the UN General Assembly passed a resolution, only just passed it, calling for the establishment of a Jewish state in Israel. There weren't very many for, and England abstained. Now some people think that's a negative, but then I think, actually thinking about it, we were already running the place. So we were a bit biased there, so they may have thought it was safe to abstain. On the 14th of May, 1948, 69 years ago today, Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion declared Israel to be a sovereign state. Now Israel celebrated this day on the 2nd of May. Why would they do that? Because their calendar is different to ours. And this day in 1948 was the 5th of Ilya, one of their months. Well, it was the 5th of Ilya on the 2nd of our May this year. Plus the fact that they keep moving celebration days because it's not allowed to clash with the Sabbath or the preparation for the Sabbath. So if it's supposed to happen on the Sabbath day, the actual calendar falls on the Sabbath day, they will move it. Because they don't want anything to affect that. Now I want to show you just a little video, just for two minutes, about this Declaration of Independence. ביום שישי, ה' באייר תש"ח, 14 במאי 1948, אחר הצהריים, 
באו המוזמנים אל בניין מוזיאון תל אביב בשדרות רוטשילד 16. הם התבקשו לשמור את סיבת ההזמנה, טקס הכרזת העצמאות, בסוד. אבל בבואם מצאו את חצי העיר ממתינה להם. סמוך לשעה ארבע הגיע דוד בן גוריון. כל חייו היו מסע אל הרגע הזה. זוהי זכותו הטבעית של העם היהודי להיות ככל עם ועם עומד ברשות עצמו במדינתו הריבונית אשר תפתח לרווחה את שערי המולדת לכל יהודי ותעניק לעם היהודי מעמד של אומה שוות זכויות בתוך העמים. לפיכך נתכנסנו, אנו חברי מועצת העם, נציגי היישוב העברי והתנועה הציונית, ביום סיום המנדט הבריטי על ארץ ישראל. ותוקף זכותנו הטבעית וההיסטורית ועל יסוד החלטת עשרת האומות המוחדות אנו מכריזים בזאת על הקמת מדינה יהודית בארץ ישראל היא מדינת ישראל בצור ישראל, הננו חותמים בחתימת ידינו לאגוד על הכרזה זו. It was a historic moment. And like he said there, towards the end of the British mandate, the British mandate ended at midnight that night. So they declared, at four o'clock in the afternoon, they declared we are, as of midnight tonight, a sovereign state. And Israel had its authority back over its own land. Sadly, not for long. <clears throat> On the 14th of May, Israel was declared to be an independent sovereign state. The United States of America, 11 minutes later, recognized it to be a sovereign state. Russia recognized it to be a sovereign state three days later. On the 15th of May, the Arab League attacked Israel. And by November the 30th, 1948, Jerusalem is divided between Israel and Jordan, and Jordan holds the Temple Mount. I think that's one of the saddest statements going. Israel gets its independence, it becomes an independent state, and the very next day, the Arab nations try to wipe it out. They're not going to though, because that's God's land, and they are God's people. They may not all be saved yet, but every Israeli person is one of God's chosen people. And I know that he's going to keep those people safe and well in Jesus' name. And I know it's important that this is in, that it's done in Jesus' name. Why is it important to us? Well, Isaiah 62, 6 says, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent. We are those watchmen. We are the people that are standing on the walls and praying for the peace of Jerusalem and praying for Israel. Our God is the God of Israel. Why is it important to us? Because Psalm 122 verse 6 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. I don't know how you read the Bible, too, but to me, that's a commandment from God. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That's why we encourage, we pray every Sunday, and we encourage us, ourselves and encourage everybody to pray as often as you can for them. 
We were given a specific instruction, apart from this, in 1999, to pray as a church for the peace of Jerusalem every week. And we've been doing that ever since. And we're grateful that God gave us that job, that mandate. He gave us that ability to do it as well, because we are supporting the people over there in Jesus' homeland. Why is this important to us? Because Luke 1, 68 says, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Our God, the one we serve, the one we sing to, is the God of Israel. That's why Israel is important to us. Why is Israel important to us? Acts 13, 23 says, From this man's seed, according to the promise, God raised up for Israel a saviour, Jesus Christ. There's only one saviour and his name is Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what religion you've been brought up around, what other people are around you, whatever religion they may have, whether they're Muslims or Buddhists or anything like that, there is only one saviour and his name is Jesus. And he is the saviour of Israel He's the saviour of all nations. I don't know about you, but he's my saviour. He is my saviour. And that's why it's important that if my saviour is also the saviour of Israel, I want to know about Israel. I want to know what's going on there. Not all of the Jewish people recognise that Jesus is the saviour. The Messiah, Mashiach, as was in that song earlier on. They don't recognise that yet. They think they're still waiting for this Messiah, this, this redeeming person who's going to come on a big white horse with loads of soldiers around him and a big army that's going to come in and wipe everybody else away. Well, Jesus is coming back on a horse, but not just yet. He's coming back with us from heaven on his horse. Are you looking forward to riding your white horse? Because if you go to heaven before Jesus comes back, you're coming back down on a white horse. Don't ask me where they all come from, or who stables them, or who cleans them out. I don't know. I just know we got a white horse. Amen? Why is, it, why is Israel important to us? Because Acts 10, 38 says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Our lovely Jesus is from Israel. And I think it is remiss of the body of Christ in general and sometimes us as well not to pay more attention to Jesus' homeland. We're not just looking at some foreign country this isn't just a country we've just picked out at random. This is Jesus' home. This is where he was brought up, where he was born, where he ministered, and where he, he went to hell for us, and then went to heaven afterwards. We don't just celebrate Jesus at Christmas. We celebrate Jesus all the time. And I want to celebrate him and his country more. The whole reason for him being here was that he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power and he went about doing good and healing everybody who was sick and oppressed of the devil. Anybody. He went about doing good. Well Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. He's still going about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Anybody who is sick. He wants us to know that we can have a personal relationship with our Father God <coughs> through, excuse me, <coughs> through Jesus' own personal sacrifice. He wants us to know that. Do we all have a personal relationship with Jesus? Because that's what he wants us to have. Now, I don't know about you, but anything I can celebrate about my Jesus, yeah, it might be yours as well, but when I'm talking, he's my Jesus, all right? Anything I can celebrate about my Jesus, I'm going to celebrate. Well, today is 69 years since my Jesus' land got its own sovereignty back and was allowed to look after its own stuff. 
Not completely, because of the way the Arabs did things later on. But they've got their land back. Well, did anybody think it would be a good idea to celebrate with them? Now, has anybody ever seen Jewish people celebrating? Yeah? Now, whether you've seen it on a film or you've seen people in person, you might have seen them celebrating. They do a lot of dancing and they do a lot of singing. Does anybody know the name of a song that you might hear Jewish people singing when they're celebrating? You know it. You know it and I can tell you in two words. Hava Nagila. You heard that? Most of you will have heard of this. If you haven't remembered those words, you will have heard of it. Okay? Now the, whole, the word Hava Nagila means let's rejoice. Now this is, this is a, these are not the Hebrew words, but they're the transliteration. In other words, if you say these words with these English letters in them, it sounds like you're speaking Hebrew. Okay? And the song says, Hava Nagila, let's rejoice. You've heard it? Hava Nagila. You've heard that one, yeah? Hava Nagila. Hava Nagila Venismecha. Let's rejoice and be happy. And then it says, Hava Neranena. Let's sing. And then, Hava Neranena Venismecha. Let's sing and be happy. And then it says, Uru, awake, awake, awake brothers, Uru, Uru Achim, Uru Achim Blev Semeach, awake brothers with a happy heart, with a happy heart. I think they're lively words, don't you? How lively do you think they are? Hmm? I want you to join in. <coughs> Hava Nagila Hava Nagila Hava Nagila Venitsmecha Hava Nagila Hava Nagila Hava Nagila Venitsmecha Hava Neranena Hava I wish to do it again. What do you think? Let's do it again. Might get a grip of the words. Hava ne ranena, 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 hava 
thank God for Israel. Yeah? My Jesus is birthplace. Amen. Amen. And it's a good time to celebrate because not only have they just celebrated their 69th anniversary of them becoming an independent state, in a few days time it'll be Jerusalem Day. <coughs> Jerusalem Day is what is 50 years. Remember I said before that literally just a few months after they've gained their independence, Jerusalem was split between the, the Jewish people and the Jordanians. And the Jordanians had the Temple Mount. Well in 1967, Israel got its city reunified. And they're celebrating that on our day and our time, 4 p.m. 23rd of May, to 4 p.m. the 24th of May because the Jewish day is from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. which is 4 p.m. our time so I think we're going to celebrate that one as well why not? and I know that there are things happening over in Israel at the moment that we can be blessed to know that God is doing some good things over there God is getting people saved God is getting people to know more about him and more about Jesus and more about how to love one another instead of hating one another and so we're just rejoicing with him and we're thankful so just rejoice about Israel rejoice that you hear good things and pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the peace of Israel because that's the country of your Jesus Amen Thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus I don't know the timing exactly, but I believe there's a big event happening uh, next Sunday as a prelude to this um, Jerusalem Day. I don't know if you'll be able to find it on the internet. There's only a couple of uh, webcams in Jerusalem. Well, actually several webcams, but six of them are pointing at the Western Wall. <laughs> and uh, the others are just one other, two other ones, which I don't know if it'll be there. But just keep praying and just know that you can support them and strengthen them and empower them and bless them. Amen.